Hello everyone. I'd like to speak today about science. A lot of uh, misconceptions that many scientists have and many non-scientists have about what, what science is. You can speak about science in two ways. You can speak about it on the scientific method and its ability to predict the future. And you can judge a scientist or a science or a theory based on its ability to predict the future, which is basically the scientific method. This is, this is okay. There's nothing, there's no flaw nothing wrong with this, no no room for error with this. You're saying you can predict the future, but you're not saying that this is the second thing which describes reality. I, I, would, I would love to think that science accurately describes reality, but we, it, at least as scientists, we know that it's not the case. So we, we run into two types of errors in, in, in science. Well, it's a good science is a science that accurately predicts the future. Come on, Navi. And a bad science would have, have a failure in predicting the future. So we run into problems when we're talking about scale. Obviously, we're predicting the future on some kind of scale. So when we're speaking about the scale of the cell, we're speaking about biology, and we're speaking about Newtonian, maybe physics. And we're speaking about, on, this, on the, the level of the atom and the molecule, we're speaking about quantum physics and chemistry. So how, how can we get errors between one area and the other is Something that holds true for a smaller scale might not hold true for a larger scale because the smaller scale, the errors might get proportionally or exponentially, or they could just nullify each other, but the errors could, could magnify themselves. An example of this would be if you had a millimeter and you're off by a micrometer, which isn't that much for a millimeter, but you were to take that millimeter and try to measure one kilometer with it. So you'd be off by 100 meters. If you tried to measure 10 kilometers, you'd be off by a kilometer, which is huge. It's large. It's a very large number. So in this case, something that's very accurate for a small scale, right, that millimeter might not be accurate for a larger scale because the error gets expen exponentiated. The other way is something on a larger scale, something that holds true, might not be true for a smaller scale, meaning there's many subtle nuances and things that happen on a smaller scale that might average out and make a certain scientific prediction on a larger scale. So on the larger scale, you'll have this averaging out, and then if you bring it back to a smaller scale, well, things don't behave that way. They averaged out on the larger scale, but on the smaller scale, you run into probabilities. The major shift in science, in physics, was to this realm of probabilities and quanta where on the larger scale it averages out and it becomes analog, but on the smaller scale it's more digital. Today people are saying the universe is digital. And that's, that's a jump that you can't really make. Why? Because it could be accurate, but it's not necessarily accurate. Science could be, not necessarily is, just a metaphor. And what do I mean by a metaphor? I mean some type of fantasy world that we created with certain rules and laws that have no correlation with reality. However, if you follow the rules and laws, they accurately predict reality. So this is the metaphor. Uh, to give you an example, one of the first sciences, I know today no one would consider it a science, but it follows the scientific method, it predicts the future accurately, was astronomy. Now we know that astronomy is false, not 100%, but it's false, but it accurately predicts the future. One of the axioms in astronomy is that everything rotates around the Earth, and we know that to be false. And however, you can predict with great accuracy where the stars will be in any given day, century, hour, minute. Archimedes, I know, invented one of the first computers with, uh, not an electronic computer, but with uh, gears, a mechanical computer, to uh, track astronomy throughout the ages, and it, with great accuracy. And it is, it does follow the scientific method because it does accurately pre predict reality. But we know it's a fantasy world. It's not true. It's a metaphor for reality, this, astro this world of astronomy. It's a metaphor for reality. It's not actually re reality, but it projects. It, it's a projection of reality. So at the time, you could explain the whole world based on astronomy and say that's the, the science and this is what it says about our world and, you know, everything rotates around the Earth, and, but it's wrong. It's false. So there's the science and there's what the science says about the universe. And so what the science at the time said about the universe was that everything rotated around the Earth, which is wrong. So that's how at least astronomy was a metaphor. Now we can extend that and say, well, we don't know. Physics of today 
could accurately project reality, detect what reality is, and, and give us real insights into the working of the universe. Or it could still be on the level of a metaphor. And, and a great example of this would be the, the, the Feynman diagrams, which uh, came along to describe the general model. And the previous methods were difficult to work with, so they were a bad metaphor. And the Feynman diagrams became a better metaphor and easier to work with. Now, is reality Feynman diagrams? Obviously not. No one says it is, but it's a metaphor to help you work through the, the problem in the math, and it pr accurately predicts the future. Now, no one thinks that, think that the Feynman diagrams are, are reality, and everyone knows that they really help us calculate and figure out the future predictions reality. So therefore, the Feynman diagrams are scientific. They, they follow good science. They, they accurately predict the future. Well, not, they don't also necessarily predict the future, but what the future could be, a possible answer. If, if something happened, we can always look at the process and say, ah, it happened according to this Feynman diagram, and it will always happen according to a Feynman diagram. What does this diagram say about reality? Well, we, we can't say for certain that it does say something about reality. We can say that it predicts the future, but we can't say that it, you know, this is reality. We have no idea. There could be a lot more things going on or nothing more going on. We don't know. What we can say is that what we see with our eyes is not, is not reality. It's, a, it's a, an organization of a, sub, a, a sub reality. And so, I mean, obviously it's reality what we see with our eyes because we're living in reality. Forms and objects and things like this isn't actually what the world is made of. Molecules? Well, there's something that makes up molecules. So it's, it's not the most basic theory. Although it accurately predicts reality and pr predicts results, it's, if you were to say the world is made up of molecules, well, it's, it's a metaphor. Molecules are a metaphor for, for these organizations of uh, protons and neutrons and electrons. It's, it's just a metaphor. There's no actual such a thing as a molecule. It's an organization of atoms. It's an organization of subatomic particles. So these molecules that we invent and we create and we work with and predict the future with are a metaphor. So who's to say that, well, today's science is not at the metaphor level? Who's to say that it is actual reality? We know that Newtonian physics was a metaphor. It's a metaphor. We create a universe and a world that follows certain laws and rules, and it's a fantasy world. Newtonian physics is a fantasy world. It, nothing actually works according to Newtonian physics. However, it accurately predicts what our real reality, how things might happen on his scale, how things do happen. So Newtonian physics is a good science, but it says almost nothing about our, our reality. Um, one constant thing so far that we found in, in all of science is the rule of conservation of energy, for example. So that's one thing that permeates all levels, all levels of science, all scales. There's a conservation of energy, and we always have some certain concept as, of energy, but we, it, energy could also just be a metaphor. The, so far, the metaphor has remained consistent, and we keep calling it by the same name, and it, it might have the same meaning, but we don't know. We have no idea what energy is. Whereas, you know, also in like Tai Chi and things like that, they speak about energy. Are they speaking about the same energy? As a physicist, I would like to say no, but you know, they might be. So and, uh, the rule of conservation of energy so far remains constant, and I believe it remains constant, but we still still doesn't really say anything about our universe. Energy is, could just still be a metaphor. It could be real. Uh, another good example of this uh, is the particle wave duality of light, right? Sometimes if you, you want to speak about light as a wave, like in radio frequencies or something, it's useful and it predicts the future. And it's, it's something that's, that's very useful. But is light a wave? Well, I don't know. Does anyone know? We don't know. It acts like a wave. When it's useful for us for it to act like a wave and predict the future, we will treat it like a wave. But in other case, like high energy particles, Photons are particles. We treat them as particles. Are they actually particles? Well, what is a particle? We don't know. We have no idea. It's a metaphor. Particles and waves are metaphors. We know a, a wave is the propagation of energy through a medium or just propagation of energy through space-time. 
we don't know if it's actually if that's what it is. One could just be a Fourier transform of the other, but also that could be a metaphor. So be careful, very careful about extending physics to our understanding of reality, uh, extrapolating it the other way. Using it to predict the future on whatever scale it's at, that's fine. But saying it's an actual reflection of what reality is, one day we, we might get there and we might actually be there. I don't know. But a real scientist, a true scientist, would really just say, I don't know. Because you need proof. For, for, for real science, you need proof. And so far, all we all we can really say is it could still be a metaphor. The quest of science is to find like this unifying theory, Hashem Echad, the one theory, the, the one thing that unifies all of existence into one law. We don't know if that's really how things will happen. We think that it will. That's the way they, they're tending towards. But we don't know. Maybe even that would be a metaphor for what's actually happening or for what actually is. And the, the, really... I personally would like to say the best way we can ever understand reality is through a metaphor. And we might never actually know what's going on, what is really happening. And, and we could still predict the future with great accuracy. And that's okay. I'm fine with that.